Alright, here's the uh, barrel aquaponics update for May 1st, 2013. The fish aren't going to come up and see us. Tank needs to be cleaned a little bit, but other than that, they're feeding well, and I, I'll have to get a video of them feeding later on so you can see how big they are. I'm actually making some headway on the breeder tank for inside, but here's what's going on outside. We'll start with our water tests. We'll go to the pre-height. And we're actually right at about 7.2, even though it doesn't look like that on the video. It's right between 7 and 7.2. I don't know if I can get a better angle. But um, that's about perfect for where I want it. 7, about ideal the ammonia barely registering nitrite zeroed out and nitrate through the roof nitrate is just awesome plenty of plenty of plant food and you've all heard me say this a million times, but with water looking like that, fish being happy, healthy, and eating, we get lots and lots of growth. Step back a little bit. I've cut a ton out of this thing, and it still just keeps going and going and going. The tomatoes on this taste great. They're awesome beautiful. These smaller ones that come out here, my niece Brianna she'll come out and she'll grab one of these smaller ones and a piece of the basil, just rub them off, wrap the tomato in the basil and the flavor that you get from it is like ripe tomato mixed with green tomato mixed with sweet and spicy basil and then all of a sudden you get this massive black licorice overtone. Unbelievable how good it all tastes. The basil, I dried out a bunch of that and uh, it it tastes awesome. I mean, it's I've never had a basil that tastes like it because of the fact that kind of the after taste that is black licorice-y. I don't know. But anyways, the, um, the tomatoes have been coming in awesome. I was going to chop out the far end of the plant when I started removing because I'm getting, you know, tomatoes all through here. But then as you come around here, can you say tomatoes? Tomatoes. Tomatoes, tomatoes, just everywhere. All that's got to happen is the wind blow through here once or twice a day. I haven't been flicking the flowers, I haven't been doing anything, and they're just covered in tomatoes. So, you can see why I've been so reluctant to cut this end out. Now that being said, I come to an issue with this tomato plant. It's just too beasty. You can see how I've got this water channeling through here. I've had to actually, you see the roots right there, I've actually had to clear away a section on the side here because the roots were almost all the way up to the top of the grow bed out of the rocks and what was happening is it was making water overflow through the side seams and I was losing a lot of water every day right through this section it's just overflowing so you can see where I've had to channel it out so that the water will actually spread out through the bed and then you can see the 
from the last video, the bok choy hasn't done much because I just had too much growing around it. It wasn't getting enough light, and it was also not, I don't think it was getting much water. But in the past two days, I've pulled out and I've started cleaning up the bed and getting rid of some plants uh, through this front section. And you can already see now the bok choy is starting to kick in. And um, the uh, Thai basil has really started to kick in. Now here's the issue. When I removed the kale, you'll remember those kale plants, I finally removed them and we made kale chips and different things with it and I will be putting in more kale but with the plants that I removed in this front section right here there's roots from the tomato plant all the way over to here it's just roots 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 everywhere through here so this plant has been going for quite some time I'm gonna let the tomatoes that are in this section here I'm going to go ahead and let them ripen, and then I'm going to take out a big chunk of it. This whole stem right here, which you can see is it's about an inch across and a half inch thick. But I'm going to take that one whole section out, and then I'm going to let these tomatoes all ripen. And then once the majority of these tomatoes come off, I am going to remove this plant so that I can allow more light and other plants to have a chance to grow. And then once I get the second grow bed set up down here, I will end up doing uh, peppers and tomatoes in a, in a dedicated system. So. That's where we're at, but look at all of those tomatoes. I'll put this into kind of some sort of scope. Let me see if I can get it. You can see all of those tomatoes all over this plant. And it's, it's basically 11 feet from one side of it to the other. And then it's coming out. I mean, you know we walk underneath it so it's it's sticking out from the bed about three feet it's beasty um knock on wood i've got a little caterpillar that was eating up my basil the past couple days because i've been working on my breeder tank inside but you can see the paper wasp nest there, and so far, with the weather being the way that it is and everything, I have not seen any other caterpillars, and I won't name them and jinx myself right off the bat, and uh, I'll go with it. So. It still keeps trucking on. The whole system is still working great. So, get your aquaponics system going. Start learning how to run your system and how to fix your system and grow you some food and don't be on your knees fighting with the dirt. Not here in Arizona. Anyways. So thanks everybody for watching. Thanks to all the subscribers and all the views. I'm getting more views and subscribers with every new post. And I appreciate all of you. So thanks a lot and we'll see you soon.